All right, welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. And this time around, we'll be looking at the state of the nation, the 2023 election, and, and of course, calls for interim government. Founder and Chancellor of Babalola University, Adoikiti Abuad, Are Afe Babalola has called for the postponement of the 2023 general elections and the introduction of a six-month interim government after President Mohamed Buhari's tenure. Now, the legal luminary said... Uh, Preoccupation of the interim government would be to produce a new constitution that would tackle insecurity, economic, political, and other excruciating ills bedeviling the nation. Now, Babalola, who spoke at the press conference in Adoikiti, warned that if the 2023 elections are conducted, it will recycle the same crop of leaders who will plunge the nation further into bankruptcy, economic depression, and insecurity. Now, meanwhile, the governor of Imo State, Hope Uzadimme, has faltered the call for the interim government to be put in place at the end of Buhari's tenure, saying it will create anarchy. We have public affairs analyst Olufemi Lawson and a legal practitioner, James Ibo, joining us on this conversation. Uh, good morning to you. We'll begin with Femi Lawson. Good morning to you, Femi. Thanks for joining us on the breakfast on this particular discourse. Good morning. Yes, uh, Afe Babalola has been in the news for the past uh, 24 hours for about two days now. He has said that uh, the country should not uh, go for elections um, next year, that uh, if uh, we went for the elections, uh, the same crop of leaders would be what we will be getting. Instead, he has called for an interim government for six months. Remember, we had an interim government sometime in 1993 in the wake of uh, the, you know, elections that happened between MK Obiola and, of course, MTOFA, when Nigeria was actually in a state that uh, most people didn't really like. So bringing it back now to 2022, do you think we have actually gone to that level where we need an interim government? Well, uh, as patriotic as the concerns of uh, Chief Afe Babalola are, the truth is that uh, the situation in 1993, where we were under a military junta and now, are quite different. And for the country to experiment anything in the name of international government now, they be a recipe for anarchy. Because no matter how unpalatable the experiences of today are, we are still operating a constitutional democracy. And there is no way a democratically elected, elected leadership would create an interim government under this constitution. What I would have expected from Chief Afe Babalola and every other person who are genuinely concerned about the current situation of the country is to, you know, speak about how we can, within the period that we have and now and the next election, work towards, you know, getting, you know, a better constitution which is possible. And I think a lot of them are not actually taking their time to go through the recommendations of the 2014 National Conference held in this country. I've taken my time over and over to read the outcome of that conference. And I want to say that it is one of the best documents that have been produced in this country. And a lot of issues that have been, you know, that are of concern in the current constitution were well addressed in the resolutions of the National Conference. So but because of the failure of the leadership, the failure of government to implement these recommendations, we keep working around this failed constitution, and this is what is necessitating the kind of concerns that Chief Afebu Malala is having. But I would want to say that rather than suggesting an international government, which is going to be legal or constitutional, why don't we look at using available resources, available recommendations, and of course, other patriotic suggestions from patriotic Nigerians to get our constitution worked on. We can have a perfect constitution, really, yeah. but we can start from somewhere towards the election, and by the time the next administration come on board, we can begin to improve on the lot of our constitution. But calling for an interim national government may not be it, and it is not even it, because it will lead us into anarchy. All right, uh, Femi Lawson. So, uh, 
you know, a lot of um, you know talks have um, surrounded this issue of, of the 2023 election. So uh, the, there's a legal liminary. is not the first person who has talked about cancellation. You remember when uh, the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God uh, came out to say that um, God has not uh, revealed to him um, about the 2023 election. I w we even had you on our news now comment on that. But as it is right now, you know, don't you think there's a bit of a, a reasoning to the effect that or to what he said about having the same crop of uh, leaders, the, uh, uh, some people have said, uh, being recycled to govern the Nigerian space? Well, the truth is that uh, the political reality of this country is that if you bring two, three major political parties to the fore today, there is likelihood that whoever will emerge as candidates for governors, for president, for even senator as a representative member, are uh, people who have traveled the cycle of our political parties. So ideologically, there's no difference. And even if we have an interim national government, the operatives are not going to be brought from heaven. There are still going to be people within this same society that, is, that has become so faulty. Why do we continue to produce the kind of leaders that Chief Fabiola is afraid of? It is because the system allows even the best of the best to become you know, corrupt, become ineffective, become inefficient the moment they come under the system. So even if you bring the best of hand to operate this system in the name of international government or whatever, if we don't have a, an institution that will work and correct and put them into, you know, working in the line, in line of the proper perspective, they will turn out worse than even the corrupt, corrupt politicians that we are afraid of recycling in 2023. So I think we should be focused more not on those who are coming to occupy positions, but how we as Nigerians can demand for the restructuring of the system to the extent that even if you bring the worst of human beings to come and occupy positions, they will operate and they will work efficiently. But um, Femi Lawson, there's, there's no way restructuring is going to happen without you know, having the lawmakers, the constitution being looked at. Uh, that's not going to be the case. It's a good thing that you have made reference to the uh, CONFAB, National CONFAB of 2014 and the fact that that has not been implemented. As a matter of fact, the excuse that was given is the fact that the interest was not entirely represented. Uh, you know, the argument is you really didn't have, um, you know, the sect of persons, political parties, or uh, party being represented. And that's the reason why that has stalled. But let's also look at some of the concerns that were raised in, uh, you know, the issue, the proposal that's been given by Afe Babalola. He talked about the constitution that has made it very lucrative for politic politicians and political office holders. And he, he, he proposed that maybe we get to a point where we have a, a legislative system that's a part-time and also have a non-executive, not really having maybe a president. What are your thoughts? These are, is it, to, to first start with, I am not, I don't want to believe that there was any section of the country, including the political parties, including the All Progressive Congress, which was in the opposition as at the time of the National Commonwealth, that were not represented at the conference. That is not totally correct. But, but, Everyone, but, but that's the, the argument, but you, but you would agree with me that that's the argument that's been put out. No, that's, that's not correct. They were all represented in the states of the APC sent three representatives each, you know, to the national. So it, it is not correct to say that they were not represented. And even the party itself had admitted to the reality of restructuring. And that is why it's constituted in Malam National Rarify, you know, committee to look at the, you know, workability of the debate for, you know, the attention for restructuring. And that committee did a lot of work and even made recommendations to its own party that is in government. So restructuring is not alien. It is not an issue that is just being raised. Even the APC itself, you know, campaigned over it. After assuming power, you know, constituted a committee to discuss restructuring. And restructuring is not something that is so cumbersome and, uh, you know, it's unachievable. Restructuring is achievable within the context of the works that have been done in the past. You see, restructuring dealt... Uh, the 2014 National Comfort Report dealt more on the issue of our constitution. A lot of the issues raised at the Comfort were around the constitution. 
So if these were implemented to a reasonable extent, I can tell you that we are almost having a new constitution by the virtue of the recommendations of the of the 2014 National Conference. But the truth look, is that... Mm. No, so, so there's I no argument. Know. There's no argument surrounding that. But you were saying that the people would need to demand, uh, you know, they need constantly demand that you have a review of the constitution demanding that that be changed my, and if you have a government have no I, I, if you have my leaders have i mean bad. if you have leaders if you have leaders that have refused and made several excuses as much as you have mentioned that you don't agree to it but these are some of the excuses that they have given that you didn't really have um, the interest of everyone being captured and so how can the people now be demanding for constitutional review or adjustment of the process like you're talking about without a constitutional review how can this be no the, 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 the idea is this the leaders are not there by themselves or on themselves the truth is that if the demands are enough if the pressure is enough on the ruling class the truth is that they want no other choice than to do the bidding of Nigeria. The 2014 National Conference was not given, you know, as a gift by the then administration of Dr. Goodluck Jonathan. It was as a result of demands by Nigerians, the media, the civil society, the social political organizations, Afeni Ferry or Anese, you know, the middle. It was a product of persistent demand by Nigerians. So if we want a new constitution, no regime will give you a new constitution a la carte. It is going to be given on the basis of demand. And that's why I insist that Nigeria should continue. Not that Nigeria has not been demanding, but Nigeria should continue to demand that we get our constitution reviewed, not in the manner that this crop of National Assembly have been doing it, but in line with such that captures the aspiration of almost every sector of this country as represented during the National conference in 2014. And if they are not satisfied with that, we can always raise a constitutional conference that will have representation of the Bar Association, the labor movement, the civil society, media, and every other interest group to work towards producing a workable constitution, which will be you know, ratified by the National Assembly. But National Assembly will also be involved. Because the... the All right, uh, Mr. Lawson, uh, are you still there with us? Femi, are you still there? The country does not must be able to decide how they want to be governed, not how 460 people wish or how a few number of people in the executive wishes. It is going to be on the basis of how the people want to be governed. All right. Uh, you know, in, in the wake of all of this, uh, this call for interim government, you know, reactions have actually trailed, you know, the development. Uh, the governor of Emo State said them, the, so, the country's constitution does not allow for an interregnum. You know, senior lawyers have actually reacted to that. Afeni Ferry also, uh, you know, said in as much as, uh, you know, the, the issues raised are genuine, the issues of, uh, you know, security, the economic hardship, uh, bankruptcy, and all of that, that the nation is headed towards. Uh, it does not really support on the call for, you know, rescheduled elections. But let's look at it from one angle. Now, shouldn't the conversation be uh, that of, uh, you know, improving the lot of Nigerians, improving the state of the economy, the state of the nation, that way, uh, if all these things are considered, uh, would have, we'll have like a, a, a continuum. Then come uh, May 2023, um, there will be another set of uh, administration or administrators who will govern you know, the machinery of government. Shouldn't the focus be about um, changing the status quo, changing the issues that we have, you know, bedeviling the country at the moment? No, it cannot be about that because the truth is that there's no way you can transform the economy better the lot of Nigerians, improve security, or every other thing that are wrong today without addressing the roots. There is a foundational issue. There is a root cause for these problems. And no matter how much more you try you know, to get the economy work, no matter how much more you try to secure the country, if you don't have a system that will ensure the successes of all these attempts, you keep you know, moving around the circle without making any movement forward. The truth is that uh, most of the things that are wrong with us today are products of the inefficiency of our constitution. Let us take security as an example. Today, if something is happening in your neighborhood, yeah. today, I'm very sure you have to rely on your CDA 
getting the BPO, you may have to take order from the commissioner of police in the Kenya, or perhaps CP taking order from the IGP in Abuja before it can work. We are talking about state police. These are constitutional issues. These are, you know, we are talking about community policing. These are constitutional issues. The constitution does not permit our state to even provide security as it should. So we we'll continue to have insecurity. Look at the economy. An economy where, you know, a lot of issues that affect you and I at the grassroots are determined from Abuja because they're on the exclusive list. There's no magic that can make the economy work. There is an economy where your state is sitting on a lot of mineral resources, but it cannot explore it because it's within really the power of the man in Abuja. It cannot work. So there's no magic that can better the lot of, of Nigerians except to get the institution properly working, except we get the constitution properly working along the line of the interests of the people. So we are just doing trial, trial and error because everything that we are doing that looks like it's working, they are just magical. What we make Nigeria work is getting a constitution that will drive our institutions, getting our institutions being efficiently run by the virtue of not who is there. It's not about bringing a man of integrity or a man of strong will to be president. It will not work. What we make it work is the institution that is there to make him work, which is not available. Femi Lawson, shouldn't we be worried and concerned that, you know, uh, as an elder statesman as a fair Babalola has lost, you know, trust in the electoral and democratic process and is calling for this because he believed that this particular system or this particular, I mean, the electoral process as it is, cannot produce leaders that can change, you know, turn around the... Um, economic situation of the country. In his words, he talked about the fact that if this continues, if we go on with this election, what would happen is that we're going to have transactional leaders and you know recycled leaders who cannot do anything to change the, the lots of the country. Shouldn't, should we not be worried? Also recently, uh, you have a very reverend, uh, revered man of God who talked about the fact that He's not heard from God whether there's going to be an election or not. So should we not be concerned with the fact that there's uh, a trust deficit? We should be worried, and I'm, as a person, worried. And uh, a lot of Nigerians are also worried. And if you follow the trend, the concerns raised by Chief Abba have been raised by you know, a lot of Nigerians, the leaders of our Nazi, Afeni Ferry, Middlebear, even Arewa, all sort of groups have been raising concerns about the direction that the country is going, especially as we move towards the election. But we must be conscious of the fact that we are operating a constitutional democracy, and we must avoid anything that will create room for anarchy. I think the lesson we must take from the concern of Chief Afeni Babalola and every other patriotic Nigerians that are worried about the current state of the country is that what can we make out of this? How can we use the little time we have to correct some, even if not all, of these anomalies that are driving the country towards an edge. That is all I think we should take out of the concerns of Chief Babala, not by yielding to the advice that we should go for an international government. It may be a, a worse catastrophe. But I think we must take lessons from their concern, especially for people like Chief Babalola, who have spent all their life you know, working for the progress of this country, who have done so much for humanity in this country, we should be concerned about their concerns. But it is not enough for us to concede that we should go for an international government. I think Chief Ababala and every other patriot should add their voice you know, to the fact that we need to get a constitution that will work within the context of what... We may not be able to convoke another national conference between now and the next election. We may not be able to convoke a constitutional conference between now and the election. But we have enough time between now and election, to work and implement some of the recommendations of the 2014 National Conference, which dealt more about restructuring this country. If we restructure Nigeria, I can bet you that nobody would even wake up to ask for an international government because the, the constituent states will be working and nobody will really be, you know, will be so much concerned. All right, uh, so if I got you right now, so if we were to review our constitution and bring about all of these uh, uh, issues that have been talked about, uh, you know, restructuring and all of that, would it um, amount for better elections next year? Would it also amount to, you know, 
getting of all those recycled leaders who have not actually you know, brought uh, much uh, benefits to the nation's economy? Definitely. Let me give you an instance. Today, local government elections are conducted by states in Nigeria, and you re realize that they just turn out leaders who are unpicked, people who are not really voted for by the people. Part of the recommendations of the 2014 National Conference was to take away the power of Congo to conduct the local government election away from the state. You understand? And a lot of issues that ordinarily recommendations were addressed, issue of state police is there, issue of, you know, the control of mineral resources that will empower the state that will not make this pressure on Abuja to be this much, and a lot of issues that will address, you know, some of those things that will be used as campaign manifestos by these politicians in the next few months. If the administration could pick some critical aspect of the recommendations for implementation ahead of the election, it will reduce the pressure. It will also guarantee that Nigerians become so conscious enough that they don't elect you know, any our leaders who will come and you know, make, not make life better for them. So it is very key that we talk about getting the country to work rather than getting lead. No, no leader will drop from heaven. If we continue to produce leaders, even the type that Chief Abel thinks should be in charge, they will not operate successfully under this constitution. But if you look at it, I mean, the, the argue, I mean, some of the arguments that is put out or the uh, proposal that's put out is not necessarily about uh, the leaders. He's talked about the component of our system. I mean, some part of our system, for instance, you talk about the kind of legislative system that we run that is very flamboyant. And he's saying that let's run a system uh, where we have part-time legislators and you don't have to have them over full scale. That's so we're able to manage our resources, where these legislators will not have to earn salary, but they can actually earn uh, allowance. It's, 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 it's not a bad idea. You see, all these are uh, just issues around the fact that we claim to be practicing federalism, but not true federalism. We claim to be practicing a system where it is not operated in line with the dictates of the system itself. If we operate through federalism, if we operate a system where, you know, politicians in Abuja do not see themselves as Alpha and Omega, you know, politics will even become less lucrative to the extent that you will not even be so much interested in going there, talk less of getting such bogus allowances. It is because we have made this so lucrative because of this, the constitution that we operate that gives so much power and resources to a very few, that everybody wants to be there to you know, keep taking this money. If we restructure along the path you know, of regional authorities or state authorities, where Lagos State can determine what allowances is pay, paying its legislator and Zamfara can also determine its own, where there will be no revenue allocation formula that mandates states you know, and local government to pay specific amounts you know, for certain persons. If Constituent unit can determine what they pay, what they can have, afford, even to people who are coming to work as legislators or as governors. I can tell you that a lot of people will not even be interested in being part of the you know, jamboree and the looking spree that are currently being experienced in the country. So we all still boils down on restructuring the system. And it is not just about the crop of National Assembly members or legislators or executives. It's about the entire system. If you go to the civil service, there are people who earn more money we we'll take more money even than the politicians that we are afraid of. What do we do to that after restructuring or after after constitution and international government? Do we stop the civil service also, where a lot of monies have been stolen under so many guises? So we must be interested in addressing the root cause, not just these uh, the symptoms. Uh, you sounded for second that you were talking about the civil servants earning this money more like it's what their uh, salary and allowances or allowance would be but you have talked about the issue of corruption which makes a lot of sense uh, so moving forward what would you say should be the way forward i know we have talked about it in all of this for you the response has been providing solution but generally how do we even approach this? For me, the big question here is, you say we constantly have to demand, but for how long can we continue to demand that we have a, a constitution that reflects the interest of the people? Freedom doesn't come so cheap. If you look at the history of most 
independent nations, they were not what was gotten on the platter of one or two agitations. It took a lot of countries centuries. It took some decades before they could get to where they are today. Our democracy is just about 20 something years, this republic. And I think, I don't think we have gone too far, you know, or endured too much that we cannot continue to demand for a better society. I think enough has not been done as far as our demands to get Nigeria work is concerned, are concerned. We must continue to do more, just like you have been doing in the media, just like the civil society has been doing. The politicians will not, may not be keenly interested in some of these things we are saying because they are the biggest beneficiaries. But we have a larger community of Nigerians in the civil society, in the media, in the social cultural, social political organizations who can continue to mount pressure and galvanize support locally and internationally to get this system work. And we should not be tired of doing that. I don't think we have done enough. So if you say how long, I don't think there's any time limit that we should be interested in doing this. We must continue to do this. And I'm very sure that as we continue to do this, we were all here, you know, where so many policies of government became, you know, reorganized, readjusted because of the persistent demand from Nigerians. So who says that by the virtue of our pressure, continuous demand, uh, an administration will not wake up and say, let us listen to Nigerians, let us amend this constitution. So we should not keep quiet because the moment we keep quiet, the battle is lost. All right, thank you so much, I'm Femi Lawson, Public Affairs Analyst, for the thoughts that you have shared on this particular issue. It's my pleasure. All right, uh, moving away from that one, uh, still to come when we return from this uh, quick break, uh, the baby boomers uh, versus uh, the you know, silent generation. We're looking at uh, parenting and how should it be done in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>